This time on Norfolk Perspectives, MacArthur Memorial celebrates the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, Nauticus is going to be presenting the Rhythms of Africa. The emergency operation makes sure, wants to make sure you're safe for critical weather during the winter, and new text tipping for Crime Line. Find out what this is all about right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and Amanda Williams, the education manager for MacArthur Memorial, is here with, with me. How are you doing? I'm good, Bob. How are you? I'm absolutely wonderful. And there are some cool things going on at the MacArthur Memorial. Did you ever think you'd hear me say that? Of course. I know. <laughs> there are always, cool, always things. cool things happening. Okay, I'm not sure if you've been on the show since we finished the building or not, or since you finished the building. It's awesome. It's pretty incredible. Um, it has just uh, expanded our ability to reach large audiences. We have a new huge high-definition theater, plays a new movie about MacArthur. We have a new exhibit on World War I that's in that building. And we have a brand new gift shop, and there are three or four different vehicles in that building now. Yeah, but I got to tell you, it still does my heart warm to walk past and see the General's Chrysler. Because you can still see it in the window. You can still see it, and it's got a nice position right in one of the special exhibit galleries. So it's pretty easy to see, and it is one of our most popular artifacts. It is also our largest artifact in our collection. Is it really? A limousine. And the only one that takes an oil change. Oh. I don't see it. <laughs> Does Colonel Davis do the oil change on that? For no, no, no. no. May, so. maybe, maybe in retirement. There we go. Uh, breaking news. That's right. Uh, Colonel Bill Davis, retired Marine which I always found to be ironic, has been the executive director for the memorial for a long time, mm -hmm. and he announced his retirement. Yes. Now, he's staying on with the foundation, right? Yes, he will still be executive director of the General Douglas MacArthur Foundation, um, but he's going to be retiring as director of the uh, MacArthur Memorial. Okay. Mm -hmm. A so well-deserved rest. He's, he's, he's served his country honorably for decades. He has worked at the memorial uh, for a decade. And now it's it's he's gonna take a well preserved break. But Amanda, I I I need to break the news to you. I think you're gonna still see him around the memorial. Oh, we better. <laughs> <laughs> so he he better not be leaving for good. He's, yeah, he was on the allowed. show a couple of weeks ago to talk about a program that he's doing with mm -hmm. uh, St. Patrick's, and I think he's planning on hanging around. That's good. Which we need to. Okay, now I, I announced that you guys are gonna be talking about the celebrating mm -hmm. the uh, T Tuskegee Airmen. They got it out again. Mm -hmm. How, how, what's the Norfolk connection? Um, well, the Norfolk connection is basically the fact that we are working through an organization called the Tidewater Chapter of uh, Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated. Um, it is a group of local uh, Tuskegee Airmen. Um, they're certified, they're actual members um, of the Tuskegee Airmen. And a few of these guys actually live in the Hampton Roads area. Um, and so it's a wonderful organization. They send these gentlemen out to address schools. Um, they can come speak at museums like ours, other military groups. Um, and so they've just made this kind of education service available. But they live in the area too, right? They do, they live in the area. Um, Hampton Roads is, is really a wonderful area for these types of uh, people. We have Holocaust survivors here. We have members of the Tuskegee Airmen here. Um, it's a really, really kind of vibrant place when you think about it in terms of kind of important historical figures who are still with us today. So when we talk about the new building, it really has given you a whole new venue mm -hmm. to be able to bring these kind of people in to us, for us to get to know them. Exactly. Um, and what we're really excited about is that we pretty much have a full house for the Tuskegee Airmen at our place um, in a few weeks. And it's mostly an audience of students. These are young people. Oh, really? These are going to be, you know, uh, they're going to be able to remember and tell their children and grandchildren, I was here one day and I saw the Tuskegee Airmen. And I think that's what's most important to us because, again, we're living in the twilight of these different mm -hmm. generations that fought in World War II. And to be able to bring them to our new venue and kind of showcase them and their experiences um, to hundreds of school children is absolutely amazing. And it's well, the reason why we exist. I, I'm always amazed when telling people about what's going on inside the, the multiple walls of that whole complex. Because if you've got a five, ten minutes to spend in downtown, you can come by and pay respects because both the gentleman mm -hmm. and his wife are there, mm -hmm. buried. But if you've got hours, you can just kind of meander around. 
I exhibits. think, you know, and a good visit is probably about an hour and a half to two hours. And, and, all you, and you can park at the mall. You can park at the mall. We can validate that parking for you for three hours of free parking. Um, so you can come to the memorial, walk around. You can head over to the mall, have some lunch, park there for free. And if you're having some kind of event and you're looking for a place to gather people, um, the visitor center is a pretty good facility for, for different parties and things after hours. Um, people are welcome to call the memorial and inquire about that. Um, but it's, it's an amazing space, and if people haven't seen it yet, they really need to come out and take a look. Now, I just thought of something. Where do they find it? Where do they find where, it? Oh, where the is memorial? the space? We are right across the street from the MacArthur Square light rail stop. Um, and right across the street from the south deck of the MacArthur Mall. Um, and so we are pretty centrally located. Mm -hmm. um, if you're downtown, it's within easy walking distance of most of the buildings and other attractions and free admission. You want to say that again? Free admission. Oh, good. Now, okay, going through a trunk, and my dad was a World War II Marine, found some stuff about the South Pacific. Are you, are you interested? We probably are. Um, we have a absolutely fantastic archives. It's really the jewel of our collection. Um, we're a lot like a presidential library in a lot of ways. We have the um, tomb of MacArthur. We have a museum. We have, again, this archives that is absolutely fantastic. And when people have documents, photographs, artifacts related to this war, bring them to us. You know, if, if you want to donate them to the collection, that's great. Um, or if you just want to share them with us, because we're all a bunch of history nerds. We love this stuff. <laughs> and what you have may not be valuable to just anybody out there. Um, but to us, it's a great story, and so we want to see it. So come for a few minutes, come for a couple hours, mm -hmm. come for a lifetime. Thanks a lot, Amanda, for everything that you're doing at Thank MacArthur you. Memorial to make it really come alive for future generations. Appreciate it. When we come back, Nauticus has the rhythm of Africa. Stay tuned. <laughs> For the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care because her father abused her and her mother her mother couldn't believe her she is the child i am for i am a casa volunteer i am you Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. You are in for a treat because I think as we talked with Amanda, it's, a, it's really good to tie into who our roots are and what our history is, and that's one reason for the MacArthur Memorial. Now, when I think of Nauticus, I think of the big battleship. I think of Nautical and the whole nine years, and I got Sheila Harrison here to tell me that it's a little different there. And on the 23rd of February, you're bringing a real special treat, aren't you? Yes, we are. As part of our celebration for Black History Month, we have invited Griot Felix Simmons, who's here with us today, to do a presentation entitled Rhythms of Africa. And he's going to share in detail a little bit more about what that is, but we think it's important to celebrate African American History Month. And this is one of the programs that we're presenting to do that. Okay, now I mentioned uh, in, the, in the tease, you know, who you are. I know that in some circles, I'm uh, my position with the city I'm my wife's uh, husband, Jolene's husband, or I'm, mm -hmm. more importantly, I'm usually a, Amanda or Monica's dad. Yes. Who are you? Well, I'm Sheila Harrison. I am the daughter of Freddie Mae Spence and Elmer Spence in Camden, North Carolina. There we go. So it's a matter of knowing those roots, right? Felix Simmons, who are you? Uh, I am a child of God first and foremost. Uh, my Americanized name is Felix Simmons. My African name is Griot Jojo Babatunde. Uh, and I'm a griot, and a griot is just a bigger word for storyteller, but all storytellers okay. need to realize that there are morals in these stories, and we need to explain them to everybody as we tell them. And so much of our history has not been recorded by being written down, no. but by the stories. In pre-tape, I was telling you, you know, some of the really special times mm -hmm. were in those hot s summer evenings in Alexandria, Virginia, with my mom sitting on the top step, basically gossiping. You're learning. I learned a whole lot. Yes. But I forgot a lot of it, too, though. Write it down. Okay. Look, look at this right here. Uh, I want to share this with you. It's a, a family tree. 
And yeah, I'm not sure how high up thing. I could go on that tree. Yeah. Well, you make copies and you fill it out alone. Wife fill it out alone. Your son fill it out alone. Your daughter, and then you sit down and you go up in the attic and bring down these Bibles with family mm -hmm. history, and you learn these things. Because in Africa, you're not just Felix Simmons. I got to give you a lineage of who I come from and from whence I came. Now and you mentioned to me in pre-tape yes. that you were not born in Africa. No, you were born in Arkansas, but. Hence the accent, I just caught it, okay. If, if I went to Africa and got an African zebra and took it to France, would it be a France zebra or would it still be an African zebra? Ooh, that's a very interesting way of putting it. Well, because four years, 400 years is the time that we allocate for Africans being here in America. Mm -hmm. It didn't change me one bit. I uh, let people call me Felix, Hey Dude, Baba, Griot, Storyteller. Uh, I answer to all the above. But I want you to know who I am. Uh, I'm about peace. And I've realized some things by studying African history I wish the world could see. We're not a textbook. We're not a laboratory where whites over here, blacks mm -hmm. over there, Indians over there. We all influenced each other in making of this great country that we live in. And I'm so glad. I got a, a new term like for Christmas. I go, Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. I've been walking around saying, Happy Black History Month, and man, I got a hug from an older lady the other day. She said, well, why are you celebrating Black History Month? I said, well, ma'am, I said, some of the history was left out, and now we got a whole 28 days, shortest day, shortest <laughs> month in the year. Mm -hmm. I said, but we can talk about the powerful, positive contributions that Africans have made to the construction of this country and culture that we mm -hmm. live in. What do you find when you talk to... Uh a, a, a kid of seven or eight years old. Are they plugged in? Like you, were, were you plugged in at seven or eight years old? Let me ask first. Yes. Okay. My father okay. was a stickler about knowing who are you. Don't just tell me your name. Tell me a little bit about your father, your grandfather, your great great grandfather. So it was part of you growing up then? Yes. And he cooked good too. I had <laughs> Spanish food, African food. Uh, and my mother is from the uh, islands off of South Carolina. She's the last group of Africans that was transported here during the diaspora. She's Gullah. And, man, she speaks with a Gullah Patois and can cook that low country cooking, that jambalaya. Oh, my, my, my. It was fun in my house. Wow. Sheila, how would you plug into him? Well, gosh, Phyllis and I go way back. I mean, I've known him probably 10 years, so 15 relationship. years. Relationship, exactly. And um, over the years, we've certainly gone to him. He does Kwanzaa programs for us, um, and he does these type programs for us for Black History Month. So he's just a great resource for us in terms of helping us to tell our story, tell the African-American story. You know, something that happened at the beginning of this segment, I just because you and I, well, way, way, but we've yes. known each other about 15 years now. Absolutely. But when I asked you about who you were and you lit up and told me you were your parents' daughter, that's the first time I knew where you were from. Oh, okay. And I think so often we kind of, we say, okay, so-and-so is a friend. And it's even worse now with Facebook and that. Mm -hmm. We think mm -hmm. they're a friend, but are they really? But do we really know who we're talking to? Is that really what you're, what, what the well, message I'm, you're trying to get across? I'm trying to get black people, white people, mm -hmm. Chinese people, all different races of people Let's talk. Where in the world do we ever have a chance to sit down and just talk race relations and look at the contributions and look at the partnerships that we have made the 400 years our country has been standing? We influence each other. We, we, we say Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. But what about that black inventor, Lewis Howard Latimer, that patented the filament for the light bulb? Now, that's cooperation. That's right. working together. Uh, and then when you start looking at the history of Africa, man, it's so many uh, locked doors there that we haven't gone through together. We look at uh, the hieroglyphs. We look at the Nubian mm -hmm. culture. We look at the uh, third graders here in Virginia. The number one thing that they study about Africa is Mali. And that's the African country that they study. And you learn about the animals and the instruments. I have a talking drum here. And this, this thing here, a lot of people say, it makes a lot of noise, but it's a shekare. And uh, it's, it's, it's just so beautiful. And my son looked at me all the time and he said, Daddy, you are the king African in my family and you're my role model. That's awesome. I said, well, good, as long as you bring them A's home. <laughs> there you go. Yes, okay, sir. explain the garb. 
uh, not garb, just African clothes. Okay. A lot of people look at me, and this is mud cloth. Beautiful. Uh, it's hand woven. I don't know whether you can see it, but it's about four inch pieces that are long little pieces that have been sewn together and the markings on here have been placed on there with potato and dye. And uh, it's, it's rather regal and a lot of people say, why you got that on? I said, cause it's cold outside and it's very warm. Now the piece I have on on here is uh, made of guinea brocade. And I wear these pieces right here because uh, Africans and it don't take much to say all Africans, after the institution of slavery, decided never to wear uh, iron around their arm totally locked. So these are called manillas of freedom bracelets. And you see what I mean? I can take that off just like that, slide it you back You have a choice on. to have them on or not? It's an honor. To me, I have uh, two pieces here about 400 years old. One of them represents the primordial Adam and the primordial Eve. Wow. And, and people look at me sometimes, they say, oh, you rich, you got gold on your arm. I said, I wish this was gold. It's brass. Uh, and it's a teaching tool. Everything I tend to wear is a teaching tool. Well, Felix, uh, you know something? I knew this I was going to happen. Yes, sir. About mid-sentence, I started getting this, which they're telling me I got to go. But we can continue this conversation on February 23rd at Nauticus. Absolutely. Come on out. Love to. And you it drawn? is included? Poorly. Poorly? Well, we'll make you sound like a super drummer. I have drummers that come with me. <laughs> That's an offer. Mm -hmm. yes. I can't refuse. Come on out. I even have you playing the uh, cool talking well, drum. I tell you what, I just got to do appreciation in our next segment. We're going to have Jim Riddick on to, to get us prepared for my drumming. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, I got the guy on the sofa that's going to tell you to stay away from my drumming. <laughs> Jim Riddick, uh, the uh, director of the Emergency Operations Center. How's it going? Doing well, Bob. How are you doing? Pretty good. Hey, welcome. Uh, ever since you've been on board, we've had a couple of flurries with uh, possible storms, but they've headed to New York. Right, right. So w what's your connection with New York? Well, first of all, I'm not going to take credit for bringing any bad weather here, so yeah, you, you, it didn't come with me when I got here. Okay, because that's, that's your sole purpose uh, with the city, right, is to let us know what the weather's going to be and get us ready for it. Well, I, I, my slogan is that my job is to tell people things they don't want to hear, to spend money they don't have on things they don't think will ever happen, which includes national, 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 natural and man-made disasters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because uh, you've been awesome in getting the forces together that have a plan, but today we want to talk about the guy watching this show. Sure. Can they sit back, relax, and know that we have a plan and they're okay? They can be confident that we're continuously updating our plans, uh, and it's not just the city of Norfolk working on their plans. Mm -hmm. We've adopted, uh, during Hurricane Sandy even, uh, the Team Norfolk approach, which is not just the city. It's public, private, not-for-profit, higher education, military, all of us working together in concert with one overarching strategy on getting through whatever the incident is. But it, everybody has a role. I mean, from, the, from, from our partners in the federal government, state, regional, local, down to the local resident and our homeowners and our business owners, everyone has a role to be prepared. Now, is their role then just to get to the store, get the get the uh, supplies and b batten down the hatch? That, that could be part of it. Okay. Uh, we do encourage folks to have a disaster supply kit. So, Oh, come, that Jim, every EOC director talks about the kit. They come in handy when you need them. Uh, another slogan, it, oh, heck, yes, I do. Really? It's better to have a need not than need not have. It could Because, you know, you can expect, and we've seen certain incidents where there's power outages. So you're not going to be able to cook the things that are in your freezer, or you're not going to be able to, to, to live like you usually, you're used to living. So there's things that you're going to have to rely on, whether you do so in your house or you pack up and evacuate. Having that kit ready to go um, saves you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Well, you know, I think, uh, I know we pay a lot of attention to hurricanes right and there you have the you have the you know four or five day kind of warm-up time where you can talk to the wife and say how's our kit looking? right 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 because uh, I'm going to be at the emergency operations center mm -hmm. but a few weeks ago we had a kind of a surprise little snowstorm it, well it was somewhat of a surprise the forecast was actually there 24 hours ahead of time uh, and it was pretty darn accurate. So uh, we, we want to share with folks what tools that we use uh, in forecasting. Well, we don't forecast the weather. We looked at the National Weather Service to provide the official forecast. Uh, and they have a lot of great online tools now that 
that that are available for everybody. So it's it shouldn't be a secret. It shouldn't be you know you shouldn't be surprised when certain things happen. But where do you go to get those tools? We can put them online. We do put them online. Okay. Um, it's it's all online through the National Weather Service in Wakefield. That's the field office that we use. Uh, and Bill Samler, he's our warning coordinator, meteorologist there, and he's he's been he's been doing a bang up job making tools available for us. Okay. Now, now Jim, I know you've got you got the whole BlackBerry. I, and I it, you know, it's wired up, and it's going to buzz when something—I don't know—when something shakes on the West Coast, and it might have an impact here. Sure, but that's not the average guy. True. So, do you have some tools for the average guy? Can we do. You? I'm glad you mentioned that. We have a program now, now called Nixle, uh, N-I-X-L-E, and that's what we're starting to use to to send out alert notifications. We had used a system before that we referred to as Nor or, uh, Norfolk Alert, mm -hmm. which. It was pretty antiquated, and it sent hours for messages you know, to get out. Sometimes the storm was passed by the Exactly, time. and yeah. that, that's embarrassing and, and, and could be a liability. I mean, you know, if there's a tornado, a tornado warning and folks get the message long after there was touchdown, that's, that doesn't make us look good at all. So we could have spent the, the several thousands of dollars to maintain that system, which wasn't really working for us, or work on another one, which we are tinkering with Nixle, which is actually free to public safety. So we were able to take advantage of that. We were tinkering with it, testing it to see if it really was going to meet our needs, and then Hurricane Sandy happened. Mm -hmm. And we went from 300 subscribers to over 1,700 subscribers just like that. And guess what? It works. It did. It worked like a champ. And for those who don't know, the Emergency Operations Center environment, there's a Joint Information Center uh, environment, which you're heavily involved in, and that's where messages were being crafted, in Nixle first. So if you're a subscriber, to Nixel, you're getting that information from our emergency operations. And that, that subscription is free and really easy to access. Just go to Norfolk.gov. Yes, uh, you can go to Norfolk.gov. There'll be a link there for mm -hmm. Nixel.com, N-I-X-L.com, or excuse me, N-I-X-L-E.com, or if you text 888-777, uh, your zip code, it'll you'll be registered that way as well. Now, I understand in my notes that uh, you're not a meteorologist. In fact, I understand that the groundhog is more accurate than you are? Oh, I'm not going to say that. I, all, all I'll say is I don't put much uh, credence into, into the groundhog or general seasonal forecasts. Uh, we know for a fact that we're going to get hit by hurricanes and, and winter storms and other events. We know they happen. They have happened. So we continuously plan to uh, be even more prepared for it. So. Cool. Thanks a lot, Jim, for everything that you're doing, but also mm -hmm. getting the message out that the personal responsibility is really the way to go Absolutely. when it comes to your own home. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. When we come back, we're going to be talking about texting and I left my Blackberry at home. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Yes, you can get prepared for the storm, but what if you see something or you've seen something on the news that uh, you can help solve a crime? There is a way to do it and an even easier way to do it with modern technology. Phil Davenport, president of Norfolk Crime Line. How, How you doing, Bob? You have been involved now with the Crime Line for how long? 17 years. Holy moly. Now, the Crime Line is actually, how many years? You just celebrated a big anniversary. We, uh, about 31 years old. We celebrated our 30th anniversary last year. Okay, does this mean that you're connected with the police department and you're a police authority? No, we're not connected with the police department at all. We're private citizens, just raise money to pay the awards. Wrong again. So who's this guy? Chris Amos. Norfolk Police Department PIO. We know you because normally you have a flashing light behind you and it's, it's in the middle of the night. Yeah, it, that's, that's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Because you, you get the pleasure of saying that famous line, which is? If you have any information, call 1-888-LOCK-YOU-OFF. And that's who we're talking about, right? That's who we're that's talking about. That's number. the crime line number. Okay, I'm going to ask you what everybody is probably saying. You keep telling us that if you call that number, nobody will know it but we can get a thousand dollars. How does it all work? Well, they call the number and report a crime. Okay. The crime gets investigated by the police department. They do the investigation, they do the arresting, and, and they come to the crime line board and just make a recommendation on an award. We uh, make that award and give it to that person they called in. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, how do you keep it anonymous? We don't ask for any names, don't take any names, never use names. There's a code word that's given to that caller, and that's the only way we operate. Now, so, Chris, I'm going to ask you to take your, you don't have your uniform on. That's right. Speak honestly here. Do you really solve a lot of crimes this way? Yes, we do. Uh, really? last, last year alone, we solved over 100 crimes. Uh, that, that the crime line tips was a, a part of solving that crime, gave away over $22,000 since 
the program started, we've given away over half a million dollars. And so I can tell you from the police side, the investigator side, uh, crime line is, is invaluable. I, I mean, the information that comes in, people that see things can anonymously provide that information, and it saves us countless hours of investigation. So it really is that relationship no, between huge. the eyes and ears in the street. Priceless. So the, those security camera fuzzy things that the face is covered up from here on, Every 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 boy's mother knows his eyes, right? That's exactly right. That's, <laughs> that, exactly that's right. what you're counting on, though, right? That's correct. We're counting on the citizens to notify uh, and just tell them what they see. There's a lot of eyes out there that see a lot of things happening. That they know information, and we just want to get it to the police department. Okay, now I, I have to I'll be honest with you. I, I related to your press conference the, before we taped where you're moving toward the texting thing because I can't tell you how many texts I've gotten from my daughters and they don't have time to talk to me. So it's easy. It's totally easy. 274637. And that spells? Crimes. Crimes. Easy. And, and all you got to do is text Norfolk plus that tip to that number and it comes right to the police department's computer. It gets, before it gets there, it gets encrypted in Canada so nobody can trace it. Nobody knows who it comes from. And all they get is the information. They follow up investigate it and if they arrest somebody they're going to come back to the crime line board and say we ought to award this money to somebody and we do it okay so i sit there and text am i going to get a phone call i'm not going to get a phone call back with follow-up questions or no, interrogation from this guy you're, what you'll get is you'll get a code a code number okay. back to your text phone and that's all you'll you'll get if you want to tell more you can keep telling more and if you want to stop that communication there's instructions there on how to stop that communication stream anytime you want to. Okay. Now we're we're going we're putting posting on uh, Norfolk.gov, the city's website. You know the the banner that'll give that number again because it is what crimes two seven four six three seven. I'm impressed. And the phone number one eight eight eight. Lock you up. Look at that. He's moved past the phone number. That's right. Right, because it really is about texting. You were commenting in pre-tape about being on the scene, because I, I, I wasn't teasing. Most of the time sure. when we see you, you're right on the, the, the scene of breaking news. Um, you've commented that already we've seen some texting behavior, right? Absolutely. Generally, you can count on people at a scene e either participated in or have first-hand knowledge of what took place at that scene. And it's tough for us person to person to get that information, mm -hmm. but now with the texting component, somebody will be able to text us information that they would never, they would never speak to a, a detective canvassing, but, but they have the anonymity, the freedom, the safety, the sense of security to send that text. And so uh, we're really excited at where we think this is going to take us as a police department. So I know we've put up on the board the, the numbers again, but Phil, I want to uh, specifically talk about two seconds with you about a great gratitude of the history of Crime On because it's come from the community. Yes, it has. Um, right. There were about five citizens 30 some years ago that met together after seeing the crime line born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Chief Grant at the time said, we can do that here in Norfolk. He got some citizens together that formed this group and we've been operating over 31 years. And we've raised that half a million dollars that we've given away. And, and you we're know still what? at it. And for some of those guys that we know personally 30 some years ago, so they were like 20. Thank you for everything that you guys <laughs> have you. done. And what's the text number? 274-637. Spells? Crimes. But we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48. But more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you and you. Thanks a lot.